Oh, 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 stop that work. Oh my god. Yo, what's going on YouTube? In today's video, Verdansk is finally back in Warzone and we have the best AMD settings for you to use for FPS and visibility on the new map. Let's get into it. All right, first things first, we're going to our search bar and we're going to type game mode and we're going to find game mode settings. In here, we're going to go and make sure that game mode is turned on. Make sure they want to turn on. Underneath that is related to settings. We click on graphics. We open that one up. And in here we have, if you have auto HDR, make sure that is turned off. We don't want HDR on. Optimizations for Windows, we have turned on. Advanced graphics settings, we want to make sure that our default high performance GPU is set to our current GPU. Hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is turned on. And variable refresh rate or VRR is also turned on as well. I'm not sure those ones all turned on. And now down here in your list, you're going to find your Call of Duty game. So if you don't see down here, you can add a desktop app. You still click on this button and then you find wherever your Call of Duty Explorer launch button is and you make sure you add that in there. Once you find it, we're going to click on the down arrow and make sure our GPU preference is set to high performance. Uh, optimizations for Windows just turned on as well. And then we're all done with that one. We can close out. Next, we're going to our search bar. We're going to type updates and we're going to check for updates as you can see i have an update to do do your check for updates make sure your windows update the most current version because sometimes what happened is uh, amd will release a driver or something and it needs a windows update to make it more compatible for your system so i'll be doing this one after i film this video once you're done updating your system you can restart your computer and close out of it all right next up you're going to open the file explorer you're going to go into documents you're going to go down to you find call of duty you're going to open that, you're going to open players, and in there you're going to find s.1.0.cod24.txt1. And we're going to open that one, we open it with notepad. Once you open that, you're going to go control F and type in the word thread. And you're going to find this thread count for handling the job queue. Oops. Three count for handling the got job queue. Now in here, you're going to play around with your number, set this between six, seven, or eight. So those are the numbers you want to choose between six, seven, and eight. You need to test to find out what works best for you. Uh, I used to have a, a file on what numbers work best, but sometimes it's just different based on what um, you know other pieces of software and hardware you have in your system. So make sure you play between six and eights um, and do some FPS testing in there. Once you're done with that, you go Control S or File and Save, and you can close out of that one. And we're all done there. Right now, we're going to get into the in-game settings where we have made some tweaks. To make the FPS lows a little bit better because on Verdansk it does seem to be spots where you're looking at the center of the map where you get lower FPS compared to when you're looking outside towards the edge of the map where you will get higher. So we're trying to reduce those lows. So let's get into it. All right, now that we're in the game, we're going to go to start. We're going to our settings. We're going to start with the graphics tab because that is the most important one, right? All right, your display monitor display mode should be set to either full screen exclusive or screen full screen borderless. Now I have multiple monitors, so I do tab out and I use my other monitors and I don't want the game to minimize so I use full screen borderless if you've only got one monitor or you're just playing on a console with a monitor use full screen exclusive display monitor we have set to our current monitor which is my 240 hertz monitor display adapter is going to be your GPU make sure that is set to your GPU and not your integrated uh, CPU graphics so make that that's set to your dedicated GPU which is my 7900 XTX if you need to change your screen refresh rate and display resolution, set it to full screen exclusive. Make sure you set it to auto or your highest refresh rate and your display resolution, whatever you're running, if it's 1080p, 1920 by 1080, if it's uh, 1440, 2560 by 1440. And if that's done, you want to go back to borderless, just go full screen borderless. Aspect ratio, we've set to automatic. Restart shaders, you can do this if you wish. Display gamma set to 2.2 sRGB. Camera and brightness, this is preference based on your monitor. I have mine set to 55, just a little bit brighter than I need. Um, Anti-lag, we have this turned on currently to reduce system latency and improve responsiveness. Eco mode preset, we have set to custom. VSync gameplay off, VSync menus off. Custom frame rate, I do have this on custom, uh, on unlimited. Um, you can set this to obviously your uh, your resolution of your monitor. Uh, however, I have mine unlimited just because I, I, don't know, I prefer more FPS. I don't think... I don't think it makes too much of a difference for me in terms of screen tearing or anything like that. Reduce menu render resolution. We have our native pause game rendering off. Reduce quality when inactive off. Focus mode on off. And HDR, we just have the set to auto and we don't want to worry about the calibration. Over to the quality tab graphics preset. When you do make a custom preset for this, it will go custom. If you're on one of these, just start playing with the numbers and we'll make a custom preset. 
20 resolution we have set to 100 that is 100 percent of the resolution you wish to play on so if it's 1920 by 1080 have it set to 100 if you're on a 1440 for example and you want to set it to 1920 by 1080 you just got to bring this down to about 75 there and that is 1080p back to 100 for myself and that is not uh, 1440p dynamic resolution we have this turned off fidelity cast is still the best upscaling sharpening method um we have that one set to 90 now uh amd fsr 3 frame generation turn this off does give you frame boost however it does give you mass amount of input latency we don't want to use that at all vram scale target we set this all the way down to 50 variable rate shading we have this turned on <clears throat> Texture resolution, we're going to set this one to low. Uh, texture filter and eosotropic, we're going to set that to normal. Depth of field turned off. Detail quality low. Particle resolution on very low. Bullet impacts, you can turn bullet impacts on. This will give you one or two uh, more FPS if you have it turned off. But I prefer the, uh, the the you know what it looks like in game. So I prefer it on. Persistent effects we have turned off. Shader quality, we have that one set to low. On demand text streaming, we set to minimal and we're going to set that down to allocated cache size at 16. Shadow quality, we set to low. Screen place shadows off. Occlusion and screen space lighting off. Screen space reflections, we have that one on to normal. Static reflection quality on low. Tessellation, we have set to near. Volumetric quality low. Deferred physics quality as off. Weather grid volumes off. Water quality as off as well. And you're going to apply those settings. Over to your view tab, field of view, play on what you want. I play 120, that's how I've always played. Um, make sure you don't like play around with it too much. Do set one and then try and get used to it first before you go and change it. ADS field of view is set to affected, not independent. Weapon field of view set to wide. Third person field of view at 90. Vehicle field of view is wide as well. Motion blur, we want off on both of these. Weapon and world motion. First person camera movement, less 50%. Third person camera movement, less 50%. Third person ADS transition, it's third person ADS. Inverted flashbang, this is where if you get hit by a flashbang, you want to be hit with a black screen instead of the white screen, you have this turned on. And that is all for the uh, view tab. Now we're going to go over the controller settings. Now make sure your controller is selected as your input. I play on tactical, but you play on what you need to. Six sensitivity is, uh, I play on 1.4 and on 1.2. There does, was no change with Fredant because it's the same as last season. Uh, all the rest of these, you can swap with L, uh, L tr left trigger and right trigger with the LB and RB if you wish. Control the vibration, make sure you turn that off for competitive gameplay. We don't need it on. Dead zones, now this is a big one. You can test your dead zones right here. Over here, as you can see on the right side of the screen on one of them there. Um, if you have any drift, it will like show numbers down the bottom, right? So if you have drift, what you want to do is you increase this, but you don't want to go too high. Try not to go higher than five. Uh, I currently have no drift, so I uh, have this set to zero. Left stick max, we set down to 60. Right stick min, it's the same. If you have drift on the right stick, you set this to somewhere between zero and five to reduce that. Right stick max sets to 99. Left and right trigger, make sure those are both all the way down to zero so you get the quickest pull movement you can when you're aiming and firing. Over to the aiming tab, sensitivity multiplier. I haven't changed any of these. I like it how they are at one. Aim assist, make sure that's turned on, obviously. ADS aim assist, turn on. Uh, advanced aiming settings, what have we got in here? Uh, ADS sensitivity, transition timing on instant, third person is uh, assist, aim response curve type, we make sure that one is set to dynamic and we have a slope of one. Don't go changing your slope, it's not going to make too much of a difference, just have it on one as dynamic. Movements, uh, sprint assist, I've just turned this from tactical sprint assist to on because what it does is now I can click in my left trigger, my left thumbstick, sorry, and what it does that will then pull up my gun for a tactical sprint however i will normally if i'm pushing forward i will just be walking around so that way i get a quicker snap for my ads so i've just done that because with the ttk being so fast in verdansk that uh i want the quickest possible time i can get from my gun being from here up to ads instead of running around like this and then ads you know what i mean so make sure if you want to try that one put that is on Mental assist, they have off, crouch assist, off. Corner slice, that's where you bend left and right. We have that one turn off as well. Side dive behavior, I currently have it on side only. Play hybrid if you wish to dive and slide at the same time. Uh, sprint restore, I currently have on side maintain sprint. We have on as well to carry on the slide after we, uh, the sprint after we slide. 
Parachute behavior. Turn this off if you want to reach the ground the closest. Mantle cancels reload. Super annoying. Make sure that it's turned off. It shouldn't even be a part of the game. Movement advanced settings. Not too much in here. Tactical sprint activation. We have single tap run. Plunging underwater. Make sure you set to free instead of using triggers to go up and down. And sprinting door bash. Make sure that one is on as well. Over to combat. Not too much to do in here. Prioritize body shield instead of um, the finishing move. If you wish, armor plate. Make sure it's apply all instead of one by one. You can cancel your application of plates as you go. So it's the same thing, except it does the animation all at once instead of you doing it by yourself. C4 detonation activation one by one instead of doing two. Equipment my baby hold. What do we got in here? Change zoom, sprint tactical. That's the same. Interact reload behavior for Warzone. Make sure this is set to prioritize interact. Sprint cancels reload for God's sakes. Make that it turned off. Combo behavior is independent. Depleted weapon ammo switch. When you run out of ammo, it does switch to your other gun. You have the one turned on if you wish. I prefer it on. Over to the audio tab. And here I'm running the Arda's War tune. So mine will be very specific to my headset and uh, the Arda's War tune. So if you want to put on the Arda's War tune or you're on a PC, make sure you go to Arda's War on YouTube and follow his audio guides to get the best sounding games. So for me, I'm not going to really go into it too much. Currently, actually, at the moment, the Global Audio Mix, Treyarch, Bass Boost, Sucker Punch, they don't work. They're all the same. None of them are working, so don't bother choosing anything until they put out a fix for it because they are all the same. Um, reduce tonight of sound. We have that one turned on. It basically dulls things um, for, like, you know, shell shocks, flash grenades, and things like that. Voice chat, we have that one. High about 100 at the moment because of how I've got my audio set up. Voice chat on, proxy on, body chat on. All these things we want turned on. Voice chat output. And make sure that's your headset so you can hear. Gosh, took me a second there. Microphone level set to 25. You can test you this, can test, 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 test. As you can see, um, my microphone is good enough to hear in game. Microphone mode, push to talk. You can have this open mic if you wish as well so that anyone can hear you in the game at all times. Microphone input device is going to be your headset microphone if you're running one. Over to the interface tab. Now in here, what have we got? Skip introduction movie, skip kill cam. We don't want to skip those. Telemetry. Uh, that's just the top counters at the left and right. Over readability. Nothing too much in here. Cust color customization is important. Go down to color filter settings. Color filter. Filter 2 is the one you want to reuse because this will give you the best visibility in game. And your filter target we set to both. And world and interface color intensity at 100 each. Gameplay HUD, this is where you can mess around with your gameplay HUD, for example. There was one I wanted to do, actually, which is put, I don't know if you can do it, is put the chats on the left-hand side. Let's see if I can do that while we're in here. Eh? I want to put my chat, in-game chat, on the left-hand side. Where would that be? HUD bounds, that's where you can set where your HUD sort of sits. Minimap rotation, make sure that is set on and it is also a square not a circle that's very important hmm stamina vehicle hard in-game text chats looks like you may not be able to cross here cross here you have that one turned on obviously it's set to larger dots for myself uh and also you can change your crosshair color which is also very important and quite cool to do i currently have it set to the scion color hmm, looks like i can't do that that's okay and that is pretty much everything for the in-game settings. Now we're going to go over to the AMD Radeon software settings where we've got a few things. We haven't really changed too much in that, but there was an update for the driver. So let's go have a look at that one right now. All right, now that we're in the AMD Radeon software, we want to go over and do a check for update. Now there does seem to be this new feature that I've updated. The current version is 25.3.1 and I have to go to manage updates and then in here, it is going to show me this little install window here where I can uh, install things. For example, I've installed the latest software resolution and the chipset drivers on the March the 8th, 2025. Uh, I'm assuming that this new sort of update window install manager is going to be where your new drivers are going to be from now on. However, as you can see, I am up to date in the latest. Uh, over to the gaming tab in here, we're going to go and find our Call of Duty game. Once you find your Call of Duty game, hold on, sorry. If you cannot find your Call of Duty game in this library, you click on these three arrows on the right and you're going to add game and you're going to find where your game is and add it in there. So once you find it, you're going to click on it and then you're going to use these settings if you wish. These are the best settings I have found. So in here for Call of Duty, 
color settings I currently use. We'll start with that display. Make sure it's set to your current display. As you can see, this is my main monitor here. AMD FreeSync. I just have it on AMD Optimize. I don't have FreeSync on, so I can turn this off. I don't use it at all anyway. Scaling mode, a global setting. We'll go through those soon. Custom color, we want to ensure that's enabled and the temperature control. I don't really play around too much of these. Uh, temperature is at 6500, uh, zero, zero, contrast. Saturation is the biggest one. This will give it your sort of more in-depth uh, color popping in the game. So make sure you turn this one up. Around about 125 seems to be the sweet spot, but you're going to have to open up the game and play with these settings as you go. And same with these global settings, which we'll have a look into at the moment. So if you don't want to use global settings, so global settings is essentially this little tab here, and this will be the same settings that you'll use for every other game that you have on your computer. If you don't want to use those, you can use these settings over here and adjust them as we go. Right now, super resolution, we have disabled. Full motion frames 2.1 is disabled. The only thing we have on is right now on anti-lag, which we have this one turned on to reduce, uh, to reduce... So it reduces the lag between user inputs and visual responses. So we have that one turned on. Radeon boost off, Radeon chill off, Radeon image sharpening we have off because we use fidelity cast in the game. Video upscale disabled, Radeon enhanced sync we're disabled. Wait for vertical refresh rate we have is always off. Frame rate target control, this is to limit your FPS. We don't want to do that. If you want to do that, you can do that in game. We have the one turned off. Anti-aliasing, we have used application settings. Anti-aliasing method is multi-sampling. Morphological anti-aliasing disabled. Anisotropic filtering we have enabled and filtering level at 16 times. Now, I did have a question the other day on stream and with this anisotropic filtering, essentially what it does is to improve texture clarity while minimizing visual noise or sparkle. And when you set the level, this will improve the texture quality at the cost of some performance. So if you want more performance, do set this lower if you have a lower end GPU. This will give you still a higher like clarity and texture, but still won't be too much for your performance. If you've got a higher card, you want the clarity, use that one, put it as high as you can. Uh, texture filter quality, we have set to standard. Your surface format optimization disabled, tessellation mode, use application settings, OpenGL buffering disabled, 10 bit pixel format disabled, and you can restart your shaders if you wish. Over to the performance tab and tuning, we're going to have a look over here. We can see that AMD Smart Access Memory, I currently have this as set to enable. This will give you frame boosts in the game, and I still prefer it, even though some people don't like it. So AMD Smart Access Memory, only if you have a supported GPU and CPU that is both AMD. That is basically everything for the... Um, for the AMD Radeon software. So if you have any questions, make sure you leave it down in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Hit the bell notification to be notified of content uploads and live streams. I'll see you out there in Verdansk. Everyone have a good day.